This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. the whole hood again put the hood up here you go ladies and gentlemen there he is <laughs> the, uni- the dark fader of comedy yeah, the unabomber you yeah had, no kidding you, right you had dark glasses you'd be the unabomber that's uh steven uh, kravitz ladies and gentlemen hey folks lives up how in, you doing lives up in worcester massachusetts yeah worcester massachusetts where it's cold and rainy is it worcester it's worcester yeah worcester Okay, is it... Unless you're from here, unless you're from here, Alex, then it's Worcester. Worcester, okay. Right. So you're from Worcester. Uh, right. But also, uh, is it is it spelled like Worcestershire sauce? It's spelled W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R. Oh, uh, okay. So anybody, Worcester, he's up in Worcester, packing the yeah, car. Yeah, living, living his dreams. Where do you pack your car? On the street. <laughs> Where do you park yours? How come you didn't you didn't wind up having a uh, Boston style accent? You, is it just Bostonians who have that? No, it is a, a Massachusetts accent. I mean, I can hear it in other people. I don't think I have it. It's because also I worked hard to get rid of it. Don't forget, I was in California for thirty eight years. Yeah, that's right. That will do you it. Know? For you know, you know what the most infectious uh, accent is. Uh, we lived in Houston, Texas for like two years, okay? Really? And my ex-wife, Ronnie, uh, since... Oh, how, many t- how many times have you been married? Um, th- th- this this many? <laughs> really? What are you laughing at? Well, I've been married three times. Oh, okay, so we're bo- all both doing it till we get it right. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. You got it right this time, though, right? Well, I mean, you know what it is when you get to my age? Uh, it's going to be the last marriage. Okay. One so way it, or the other. And even if we suddenly decided tomorrow we can't stand each other, I mean, she's going to get divorced at 78, me at 82. I, it just doesn't right. make sense, you know. Right. So you, it's it, a marriage at our age is different than a marriage at a few eight years less, okay? Like if I were 70 still, I could see that maybe I would – get divorced again you know because i as i say i kept doing it till i got it right and i also married a pretty good person too you know? yeah you married a great lady yeah yeah i mean sometimes she's a pain in the ass but then again so am i so yeah know, no kidding right yeah that happens but um so i've been married four times yeah yeah gee let's see first one i i her name was linda it's almost a vague memory she got pregnant Oh, really? Yeah, here's here's the story of my life in a nutshell. Are you a dad? Hold on a second. I'm a, maybe, okay. Maybe I am a dad, but not by the, her. Okay. We we I married Linda because she got pregnant. I figured that was the right thing to do, right? I was right. a gentleman. I, you know, it's the right thing to do, and I don't want sure. everybody referring to the kid as that little bastard, you know? So that's what it is, Okay. So we get married, and on our wedding night, we were in Lake Tahoe, and we're in a a cabin kind of unit, and uh, she starts feeling ill, and we take her to a hospital, and she has a miscarriage. Okay. That's the story of my life. She gets pregnant. I do the right thing and marry her, and right after the marriage, she has a miscarriage. So how long were you married to her? Not long. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was, I don't know, I mean, I wanted to make a go of it. You know, as long as we did it, let's try and make a go of it. So I was, sure. I, I joined the Navy because I had to just to, well, to see the Army at work. Uh, and huh. uh, 
I, I joined the Navy and then I went down to uh, Southern California and uh, I was with Armed Forces Radio and she was with me there. And then at a certain point we broke up. I, I think she right. cheated on me with somebody else. I can't even remember. It was, right. it was that kind of, I have one picture, one picture of the two of us together. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, and that was my first marriage. How about your first marriage? How, how, how did that go? Well, my first marriage was to a woman named Patricia. Mm -hmm. And we dated through high school, through college. Oh, really? She lived with me in Paris. She lived with me in San Francisco. And that's where we broke up. She she was cheating on me. Mm. And how how long how long were you together with that one? We were together probably ten years. Wow. So you must have been devastated. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. And who? And she you? cheated on me with one of my best friends. That, that's always the case, though, isn't it? Every, I was going to say to you, was it one of your best friends? Yeah. You know? Because that's what seems to be the case in a, a, a lot of times. Or an ex-best friend. Huh? An ex-best friend. The ex-best friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, did you confront him with all of this at one point, or did you just... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't pleasant. Oh, yeah. I would imagine it wasn't pleasant. No, not at all. And she ended up marrying him. Did she really? And did, yeah. it, did it last? It lasted probably 20 years. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe he was better for her than you then. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Who right. knows? <laughs> you know, it's just a shame that after 10 years, it would like fall apart like that. But then again, you said it was in high school that you started dating her. Right, right, okay. right. So what you need in high school is not what you need when you're 10 years later. That's a big period of change for you. For yeah, no kidding. Anybody. So she probably looked at you one day and said, this is not what I want with my life. You right, and, right. And, and you, also, you know, it was um, the early 80s. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of, uh, my career was starting to take off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's working full time and I'm working, you know, an hour, two hours a night. And yeah. I'm making the same money she's making. Wow. So I think there was a little jealousy there. Plus, she cheated on me. I mean, let's. Let's just say what it is. She she cheated on me. Right, right. So I mean, but uh, but nevertheless, probably it was going to fall apart anyway, just because you knew her at such a young age that you, right. even your needs change. Right, you know? right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So uh, should we get to second marriage? Second marriage only lasted like five years. Okay, and who who was that to? What was her name? Paula. Paula, you really pick them with peas, don't you? You had I Patricia picked, and then I Paula. I picked blonde chicks. Really, you know, I always went for brunettes, short brunettes. I like short. My third wife, my third wife was a redhead. Really? Yeah. Well, they they're not going to exist in about another twenty, thirty years. You know, redheads are going away. Is that right? Yeah, they're, they're being weeded out of the gene pool. Uh, and uh, so, you, but I, uh, my second, let's see here, my second wife was Ronnie uh, Bennett, uh, who um, um, I married, and uh, we were in Houston, Texas. I w was working in Houston, and um, she had been my girl from back home, and then she came, and uh, so we hung out, and then we finally decided to get married, and I didn't say no because I didn't want to disappoint her. You know, I wasn't <laughs> too I wasn't too sure about it. It did last a while, though. How long? Oh, jeez, maybe eleven years, something like that. Oh, really? That's yeah, a but, good chunk of time. But some of it was me um, uh, ch uh, running away from process servers in the divorce suit. So you know, right? Uh, but we, she came to New York. She was my producer at WPLJ here in New York. Uh, you know, as she was very good at what she did. She went on to be a producer for Barbara Walters. For about oh, really? For about 20 years, yeah, yeah. Well, good for her. Yeah, yeah, she traveled all over the world, met people like Gaddafi and people like that. You know, whenever Barbara was going to do an interview, she was there on the spot, sent to wherever the interview was going to be to, to pre-interview right. the person. So she got to meet some of the most famous people in the world. 
I bet. Yeah. And uh, so, but that she was, uh, we, we, we got divorced and uh, <laughs> I'd never forget this. The night we broke up, she came home. She said, I'm, I'm leaving you. That's it. We can't do it. Anymore. Right. It's over with. So I'm depressed. And I go down to the village to a, a, a club where two friends, uh, two people I know, or one person I know is playing, another person I don't know as well is playing. And it was Patrick Sky who was a folk singer. And, okay. And uh, I don't, you know. And then there was uh, Dave Van Ronk, who was the other person there. And uh, Pat said, "Look, what we'll do is go to the bar next door." And I'll come in and I'll babysit you while Dave is on. And then while Dave is on, uh, uh, while I'm on, Dave will come in and babysit you. So I go to the bar next door and of course Patrick comes in and we're sitting there and we're talking and I'm, you know, <laughs> you know the kind of, the kind of, uh, I didn't, in many ways, it was one of those things where uh, I really enjoyed other women a lot. And I wondered, whether I was really being sincere about being so depressed or kind of having a certain amount of joy involved in it as well. I get it. But anyway, Patrick's giving me the whole thing about it. things will be better, don't worry. <laughs> then in comes Van Ronk. Now, I don't know if you ever heard of Dave Van Ronk. No. But this guy was like a tough guy. He talked like he had kind of a rough, gravelly voice. You know, he was a very famous folk singer. Um, at the time. I mean, but, you know, when you think about folk singers, how many folk singers can you name? Maybe five. Really? Who? No, probably not. Not five. You can't name five. Sure. Woody Guthrie. Well, okay, you're going way back. All right. You saw Arlo the, you, Guthrie. You, you, oh, Ar, was Arlo a, a folk singer? I guess. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, yeah. Joni Mitchell. Not a folk singer. Oh, yes. I'd say she was a songwriter more than anything else. She didn't, I don't think those were folk songs. Both Sides Now, is that a folk song? Nah. Yeah. Circle Game. Well, yeah, but she did a whole bunch of stuff, and some of it may have fit into that category. But Some she, of it was jazz. Yeah, yeah. She she wasn't that. I can name, an, uh, well, let's see here. Let me, well, Pat Sky I named, and Dave Van Ronk, and... Um, Joan Baez. Joan Baez, folk singer, yeah. I never could stand her music, by the way. Never. No, me neither. Never, me neither. Never. Everybody said, oh, Joni, uh, Joan Baez, what a great, great uh, folk singer. And I'm going... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, know? me too. She I felt the same way. All she did would go, you know, I mean, she was, <laughs> anyway, so I'm sitting in the bar and Van Ron comes in and he sits down at the bar and he says, so tell me what happened, kid. And I said, well, I went home and then she came home and then she said she's leaving me and I, I left the house and here I am and I'm depressed because our marriage has come to an end. And he right. Goes, well, I have a suggestion for you. I said, what? He said, right now, go back home and kick her in the cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dave Van Ronk's advice on how to handle my divorce. Hmm. Well, that's one way of handling it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so that's wife number two. Who is wife Wait, number three? I got, another, I got another story about the breakup with wife number two. I uh, I never bought her a wedding ring. Oh, and I bought her a wedding ring. I bought her a wedding ring, and, and one and as she's leaving, she's just hitting me with everything. Right. In fact, the only time I ever hit a woman was that night. Because she was getting me so insane with just her constant while she's packing, she's going, and then you did this, and then you did that, and then you did this, and then you did that, and uh, I finally I just hold off and open hand slap her. I did a Will Smith slap. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. And I, and I felt I always felt really guilty about it. In fact, years later, I was still apologizing for it to her because the only time I ever hit anybody. But she just was driving me so crazy with this endless assault of everything I had ever done wrong 
that I couldn't I couldn't hang on I couldn't hold on to it any longer. So. Well, I, I hit a woman once, much like the same. She we were breaking up. We were living together. We were breaking up, mm-hmm. and she took a hammer to all the prints I had that were in glass. Mm-hmm. And she smashed them all. Yeah. And then she threw stuff at me. Yeah. And then she came charging toward me. She came charging towards me, and I sidestepped her. And as she went by, I cuffed the back of her head. Mm-hmm. You know, open handed cuffed the back of her head. Mm-hmm. And she took off like Superman. No. Oh, and really? started screaming bloody murder. Oh yeah, you you brute, you brute. Yeah. You, right. I had a, I had a girlfriend like that that when she would go to hit me, and I'd like grab her hand to keep her from. Right. The blow, and then she would twist her arm doing it, and she'd right. go, "You brute! You hurt me!" Right. <laughs> you know, but anyway, getting back to the night we broke up, she one of the things she says in this assault on me is, "And you never put an inscription on our wedding ring, on my wedding ring." For years, she'd been asking me to take it out and have it inscri- something inscribed on it, you know, on the in interior of the of the van right i know what you mean which was very common in those days i don't know if people do it now but uh i said well you know we said i just never could come up with what i wanted and the other day i actually came up with the idea of what to what to what to uh, put it on in there and she says oh really well what were you going to put in the inscribe in the ring i said number two of a series <laughs> I'm sure she appreciated that. I got silence after that. I didn't have to hear yeah, her yelling at me. And then she left, and I was single again. So, we, did we go to number three with you? We got to number three with you, right? No. Number three is the redhead. The redhead, right? And uh, and here's the funny thing: is I dated her before I married wife number two. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then I married wife number two, and then I got back to 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 Jerry the redhead, mm-hmm. and we got married. And we were married for a number of years. I don't know exactly how many, but it had to be at least ten. And, this- and I got clean during that time. Mm-hmm. And when I had five years clean, she gave me divorce papers. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to get some kind of little coin or something after five years? Yeah, right. Years? <laughs> you know. Right, I got divorce papers. You, you got divorce papers. Now, okay, so why did number two divorce? Why did why did well, number one cheated on you? Number right. Number two. Why? Why did number that? two was my fault? I was I was clean and I relapsed. Okay. All right. I don't. So that was my fault. I that was drugs. I don't blame her. Who can live with a junkie? Okay. Right. You know. Right. I mean, right. Really. Right. Uh, um, uh, let's see. Ronnie. Ronnie left me because I. I. Uh, I was. I cheated on her a lot. I did. I. What happened was here. Here's what happened, and I think you can appreciate this. Uh, d- between the time that I married Ronnie and the time that I div- we divorced, I became rather well known as a radio personality. Right. And all of a sudden, women were throwing themselves at me. And I was this like, right. insecure kid who never had to really work hard to get laid. You know? Right. And all no, of a sudden, I was the same way, Alex. I was yeah. the same way. Yeah. Women were throwing themselves at me, and I couldn't resist it. That's like during the early 80s when we were doing your show yeah. on the Quake, and we were doing uh, shows everywhere at the Warfield, mm-hmm. at the Fillmore. We were doing shows, big shows. And I had women approaching me. For the first time in my life, yeah, yep, and it becomes it becomes a major temptation. There's no question. It becomes about like it. a drug. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I, you know, I, and I uh, years later, I Ronnie and I touched base again. And eventually, she became a very close friend. She in fact appeared on this program a lot from her place in Portland, Oregon, before she died. And I apologized to her. I said I apologized. I said that was the bad time. To- that was a bad time for you to decide to marry me, you know, because right. I'm an insecure kid and all of a sudden I got all these women throwing themselves at me and, you know, what can I do about it, you know? So, and I was weak-willed and I, I always felt that was my fault, you know. Um, number three was Susan. Susan was a wonderful woman, very educated woman. Um, parents um, um, fled Europe uh, during the Holocaust and came to this country 
and were part of what they call a Jewish Socialist Bund. They were Jewish Socialist Bundists. Uh, hmm. And they were very much, uh, for instance, they were against the state of Israel. They didn't believe in its existence, that it wasn't, it didn't go with their core philosophy. And their core philosophy was no more, um, no more uh, things like what happened to us in Germany. We can't have all Jews in one place right. where they can get us. Right. Okay. We have to go into a diaspora, but take our culture with us. And that included the Yiddish language, that included music, that included literature, right. all of that. So they were very educated people and a very tough bunch of people. They fought during the war in the underground. You know, I would have do a, they would do a Yom Kippur thing. They weren't particularly religious, but they would get together and have a Passover Seder. And you would right. have all these people telling stories about, oh yeah, when I was fighting with the underground, and some little short woman, you know, would be telling me how she killed five Nazis, you know. Uh, and so she came from that kind of stock. And she was a child actress in the Yiddish theater here in New York. Oh, really? She spoke perfect Yiddish, fluent, fluent Yiddish, and uh, very bright, very smart. Uh, and uh, uh, and and I think pretty sexy. I mean, she looked like she, to me. She reminded me of Elizabeth Taylor. She had that oh, really? that kind of look, you know. Okay. Dark, dark hair, uh, uh, you know, beautiful features, and uh, big tits. So you know that that was, and I uh, uh, we started to what, what happened was, I was out of work at the time, uh, and, or was I out of work? Yeah, I was out of work at the time doing Midnight Blue, and uh, we were found ourselves broke. And she said, well, what can we do to earn some money? I said, let's get married and everybody will give us, want to give us presents and we'll say, instead of presents, send us money. Right. And so that's the reason we got married. But, uh, you know, she was, a, she was a wonderful woman, but she got, what happened with her, she got a drug problem. Oh, really? Yeah, she got a drug problem. And that was, you know, that was, that was pretty terrible. Uh, and uh, it, it even got at one point to heroin, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah. She's still alive. She weighs 300 pounds or something. Uh, she's always not well, but she's still alive, you know, and uh, I talk to her occasionally. Right. But, uh, that, that broke up because I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take the, um, it happened while I was still, I think it, was still happening when oh when I was at the quake is when it happened yeah right uh, yeah now I've made I've made up with all of my exes I, I have a decent relationship with all of them well I'm I'm I I get along with all of mine except the first one who I don't even know where she is right you know I have no idea if I had to find her tomorrow I mean if she's alive uh, I don't know where to find her right so. Uh, but I'm Ronnie till to her death a few about a year ago. Uh, we were very close. I mean, you know, as close as you can be being this far away from each other. And right, uh, I'm in the same town now again with my first wife. Oh, really? Because this is where I went to high school. Yeah. So we have lunch every week or so. Every other week That's or every nice. week we have lunch together. That's really nice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, which one did you get the best sex from? You can say this because I can't say it because I'm still married, you know. And if she isn't number one, then right, I, you know, you're not getting any. Uh, did you marry them for sex? Well, the first one you married because she would been your girlfriend forever. Did the second one did you marry for sex? Yes. Okay. And the third one did you marry for sex? Not so much. Really? Not so okay. much. And that should have been far more successful because the ones you marry for sex, I mean, sex eventually dissipates. Right. It's never right. as good. So, my, Ronnie one time said to me, why do you feel this compulsion to have sex with other women? And I said, because there's, I said, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. But the one thing you aren't is somebody else. Right. I got you. You know, and there's something about I do know. somebody else that makes it more, makes it attractive. You know, and it may be good for a couple of times, and then it's on to the next woman. You know, right? But right. But the first time is sensational. You pursued you. Right, and the first time it's just a one night stand. You sleep with them twice, 
and it's a relationship in their mind. Right. So what have we proved out of all of this discussion we're having here? That we're failing, well, the third, fourth time I got married was to to Marjorie. And, How long have uh, you been married? We've been married 11 years now. Oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah, and it's been, it's Where'd fine. you meet her? Uh, online. Uh, Are you serious? Uh, J-Date. <laughs> Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, we get paid by J Date monthly, not to reveal that, because they feel it will hurt business if we say that we met on J Date. So it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a joke. It's a not a very funny joke. It's not really a joke if I have to tell you it's a joke and then you laugh. Right. You know. Right. Hey, listen, we've we've run out of time here. Have we really? Yeah, we should do this. This again. was a good one. We should do this again next week. All right. Okay. Stay where you are. I want to talk to you after this is over. That's Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gavnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Let me turn on my lights. There we go. Now I'm I'm all lit up. Or something like that. As the term goes. Is the term all lit up? I, I have no idea. Anyway, uh, uh, that's uh, that's the wonderful and uh, talented uh, uh, Steve Kravitz, and we will have him on again next week. Uh, basically, and one of the basic reasons is I already recorded another one with him, which we're going to play next week. We do this stuff like early in the day. I do it like at one o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, anyway, so here I am, folks, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not uh, really uh, happy tonight because uh, I told you about the, the friend that we had, the friends we had, and, and they had been with each other since college. They'd been married since college. And um, uh, he died today, uh, finally. I say finally because he was hanging in there and hanging in there. And... Uh, you know, it's funny when people die like that and they've gone through a long illness, you kind of relieve, you kind of feel better for them. Uh, and also the people they left behind because they had been, you know, suffering with this thing for, for a couple of years. And it was getting worse and worse and worse and everybody knew it wasn't going to get any better. And uh, so I, I, it's just I was kind of sad and... Uh, if I feel a little morose tonight, it's because of that. Also, it's another person I know who has died. Died. Anyway, let's talk to our uh, citizen panel here. Let's bring them on here. Uh, there's uh, Kevin, and uh, there is uh, well, there is owner. Why do you why do you call yourself? Owner? It will not correct. <laughs> I don't have the app on my computer. You got to remember, I am not in the best of shape when it comes to memory. So if I don't have your name down there. It's Jason. I know it's Jason, but I, I could forget <laughs> somewhere during the show. I'm not the best at memory either. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us, Jason. Good to have you here. Better known as owner. Uh, Kevin, hello to Kevin. Hello to uh, Jeff. And hello How to- How are you? Fine, and hello to Josh. And Wheeler and hello to Alan uh, in the beginning we had Josh Wheeler just waiting here and I thought maybe he'd be the only one on but I could live with that because we we, t we talk a lot not on the program as well and he's a very interesting and smart person as is Kevin the other guy I talk to when we're not on the air uh, we, we have a secret cabal I think what would we call it a uh, a, mm. you, well, you had been doing it for years, right, Josh? Yeah, it has been going on for quite a while, yeah. Yeah, and it was like Kevin, and it's a Patrick, and it's Josh, and it's myself. And I, I, I insinuated myself upon them and said, do you mind if I join? And Josh, mm. because it was his thing that he ran, said, no, I don't mind. But we never broadcast it. And really, we should because it's some. Uh, sometimes it's the most intelligent two hours you'll ever hear on the internet. But uh, we. Just, it's I not bad. Well, I think the reason why it is so good is precisely because we don't air it, and so <laughs> everyone feels they can say what they feel, you know, without fear yeah. of retribution by 
some woke people who want to say, remember when you said blah, blah, blah? You know, so. Yeah. We can make fun of, uh, we can make fun of, uh, Vladdy, Vladdy, Pooty Poot. Yeah, Vladdy, Vladdy, Poot Poot. Yeah. D didn't, yeah. didn't, didn't Trump call him Poot Poot? <laughs> something like Poot that? Poot? He Poot might have. Poot Poot. It's something like that. Might be his, yeah. his pet name for him or yeah. something. He probably still does. I don't know. <laughs> Piss on me a little bit more, pooty poot. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, he probably still calls him that in the little love letters he writes him. You know. Hey, Alex, so. you're the only one they can see on YouTube. Oh, you know something? This happens occasionally. Well, I don't want them to see this ugly crowd. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. I'm sorry, everybody. God, thank, thank you very much, Kevin. That was uh, Brian telling me. I was doing everything perfectly tonight. I was doing everything perfectly. Uh, yeah. All the Fuck stuff was was going off just fine and then of course I go into that and I forget to you know to do this so anyway it's all your fault yeah there they are folks there's Kevin and there's uh, Jeff and there's Jason mm -hmm. and there's uh, Josh and there's Alan <coughs> and uh, that yep, if, if, if anybody else would like to call you're welcome to do so if you don't want to call in the immortal words of uh, my mother fuck you <laughs> so uh, what have you uh so what, what's new, guys? Well, we had our doctor on the, on the phone tonight. Your doctor on the phone tonight? Yeah, to see if I'm alive. Oh, what, what do you, what do you <laughs> mean? What, what, what's the problem? Did your machine call him? You know, a lot of the drugs that they started giving me some. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the doctor said, yeah, why don't you cut them in half? So, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, I think that that's a good thing too. I think I'm taking yeah. too many, too too many wrong ones, and I really next time I go to see my guy for his yearly, for the yearly, I'm going to talk to him about each one of them and say, do I need this one? Do I need this one? Do I need this one? Because, yep. you know, I mean, they can just doctors will start filling you up with pills, especially when you're older. They, they just figure, ah, you're an old fart. What the hell? Sure, we can give you some heroin. You know, what, what, how's it going to hurt you? You know? It's you know, so funny because I was just watching an episode of The Resident. Yes, uh, yes. A medical show. Yeah. It, and it, that was like the theme of the episode I was watching. It was an older I, lady taking too many drugs. I was going to bring that up, but nobody here watches The Resident except you and I. Okay. <laughs> it's a good show. Yeah, yeah, but they brought that up that this woman came in and she had a lot of different medicines that she was taking, and one was canceling out the other, canceling out the other, and they just doctors kept <clears throat> piling these drugs and on top of her. And that, the first thing I said, well, you know, if you want to get rid of that side effect, just smoke some weed. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's a good answer too, you know. But uh, uh, by the way, they have ads on TV now. How to responsibly use marijuana. They're yeah, not telling us, hey, if, if you smoke it, here's how to responsibly use it, you know. And they, they said, uh, you know, make sure that you don't uh, have other people in, imbibe in it, you know, by osmosis. Yes, uh, Alan. This is my medical group. So um, I woke up this morning and my big toe on one foot was yeah. hurting. Go. <laughs> yeah, God, that's what everybody says. Gout. Anybody yeah. else ever have this problem? No. Yes. I well, I have a toe that goes bad, but it's because I have neuropathy. Yeah. Well. Part of getting older, I guess. Well, part of getting older was today. Time. I went to take a one-mile walk, and it was like everything I had to do to keep going. It was just terrible, just terrible. And then yeah. spent my afternoon signing loan documents for mm -hmm. my my refinance on my house. Yeah. Well, you see what That's I did. What I did. Uh, was uh, I? Uh, I went out and took a walk today, and I just went. I I just haven't taken much of a walk lately. That's the problem, and uh, because of that, oops, wait a minute, Be something's careful. up there in the picture, folks. Be careful yeah. walking. We don't want to see a fall. Again. Well, you know, do you know who <laughs> fell? Did you hear no. about this? No. Fell had to have stitches in his head. Was knocked out by the falling down. Who? David Letterman. Oh, I thought it was somebody important. Well, David Letterman. I didn't. I didn't hear that. I, I haven't seen yeah. the news today. Yeah, he. Uh, he. Uh, apparently, he was walking and he tripped yeah. and fell and he concussed. How and, old is he? 
he's younger than I am. I think he's 74, maybe. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Echo, how old is David Letterman? David Letterman is 74 years old. See? That's right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. She knows everything. You know? I could probably ask her about the theory of relativity. Uh, Wait a minute. Let me see here. Uh, um, Echo, explain the theory of relative. Echo. Echo. Give you a website. <laughs> explain the theory of relativity. According to Wikipedia, the theory of relativity usually encompasses two interrelated theories by Albert Einstein special relativity and general relativity, proposed and published in 1905 and 1915, respectively. Special relativity applies to all physical phenomena in the absence of gravity. General relativity explains the law of gravitation and its all relationship right, all right, all right. of What about string Echo, theory? stop. <laughs> you, oh, you want to know? <laughs> echo? What is echo? What is string theory? According to Wikipedia, in physics, string theory is a theoretical framework in which the point-like particles of particle physics are replaced by one-dimensional objects called strings. String theory describes how these strings propagate through space and interact with each other. Okay, see? You can ask her anything. Sounds she, right. Sounds right. She didn't even get to vibration. <laughs> She's very smart. I, I wonder if she knows about the fluid hydraulics and stuff like that. I don't want to ask sure. her that. We've already, I've, you know. It, it, I'm joking. I, I just looked over at, at, at her and the, and the, the, uh, uh, Machine, the what he called the screen image, sweating. That's how how difficult. <laughs> it is. You know. So. Um, but anyway, so uh, did anybody? You know what they did today? Today was a big day in Washington D.C. as the President of the United States held another one of his little touchy feely get-togethers for the new Supreme Court judge. And all I could feel as I was watching it is that it was a publicity vehicle for the president. Did anybody see this thing? About 10 part, seconds. Part of it. And I switched the, it right off. Yeah, yeah. Because who cares? Yeah. But, I mean, uh, here's a guy who took a black woman years ago when Clarence Thomas was running for the Supreme Court and completely eviscerated her. You know, a, a, a decent jurist, lawyer, whatever. And he eviscerated her. And today he's going, oh, you see, I, and I put a black woman on the Supreme Court. Yeah, but, you know, you, you should have listened to her. I mean, he's turned out to be a real prize. You know? So. White liberal guilt going after the it, woman accusing the first, you know, the black man yeah, he was going to vote her for. I, I forget her name. What was her name? Uh, uh, Anita Hill. Anita Hill. I often felt that he should have appointed her to the Supreme Court. I think he owed her that. And, and just so that every day when Clarence Thomas went to work, he would have to look at this woman. You know, so. Anyway, that's my, that was my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, but I just don't understand. You know, they keep on saying, you know, which I, I, I it's going to sound bad, but like, they keep on, we need to make the court look like America. So, you know, I get you. Know, you should have minorities on there of all different, you know, backgrounds and everything. But why, you know, it's just that it's like only, only the black minority on the court matters. Well, if you really you want know, it to look like court. America, where's the jurist on there with a mullet? <laughs> you know. So. But uh, it, it, I get, I got a little tired of that too. But we want it to look like America. I'm sorry, no matter how hard you try, it's never going to look like America because, as I said, nobody's wearing a mullet. Nobody's scratching his crotch, you know. I mean, it's all, uh, it's all just these, um, you know, these people who had enough money to go to law school, all right? Anyway, um, I mean, whoever, Josh, do you feel the Supreme Court represents the average American? And yeah, I mean, average, I don't know that I'd say average because, you know, well, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe a little. I mean, there are a few of the justices that did not come from privileged backgrounds. Um, 
Yeah. And I don't think coming from a privileged background, you know, means that you don't know how to work hard or experience, uh, you know, failure or depression or guilt or anything else. But I mean, her background, you know, I don't think if I remember, I don't think she grew up very wealthy. No, or no, like that. no, she did. No. You know, I don't, I don't remember. Like, I think Justice Scalia's upbringing was fairly, fairly, you know, average to below average, blue collar, you mm -hmm. know, type of things. Yeah. But they all still ended up, you know, at Ivy League schools and all that. I mean, I think of the last maybe, gosh, 35, 40, 50 mm -hmm. years, maybe, there's only been like one justice that didn't attend one of the Ivy League law schools. And that was, uh, uh, shoot i can't remember he just died a few years ago and he went to northwestern and northwestern is maybe like the top non-ivy league law school you know what i'm saying yeah. so i mean it, i mean it wasn't like he went to you know community college well the thing that i which there's nothing yeah, wrong with it, i'm just it, saying correct you know. me if i'm wrong on this <clears throat> do you have to be a lawyer in order to be on the supreme court that's not a prerequisite is it no no there's there's really no requirement you know yeah i mean or anything. i mean they could nominate really anyone they want mm -hmm. so far as the senate consents you know i mean the requirement really is that you are consented to by the senate i mean that's really the main requirement yeah and that would almost um, be a nice thing if they had like a that. a jury duty type of appointment where it's just done by a lottery and an average citizen could get in there maybe there is some type of interview process just to find out you know you're not you know a moron you know you can understand i mean know, i but, think that you know i think that not having someone who is not a, a trained lawyer would be you know not good you know because i mean I, I think that you know a, a yeah an understanding of the law and experience within it is a is a requirement for me you know mm -hmm. but it's not it's not constitutionally required um you know in the early days there were people that you know didn't really practice law or anything like that 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 sat on the court you know but that was also a time when almost anyone who was prominent was either an attorney or you know a merchant i mean they were really only too high profile you know or was in the military mm -hmm. you know so i mean it was a little bit more spread out then but we do sort of have now we do sort of have like these all the justices for the last you know five or six decades are all really right. in the same mold right mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they're all cut from the same cloth but maybe just different parts of it right you know mm -hmm. i mean we we are definitely trying to get you know uh a better mixture of male versus female or we're pretty, sure we're pretty, pretty close now. We got four yeah. women to five guys. It, right. it's about, you know, it's, and in 10 years from now, they'll be crying for someone to be put on the court who's non-binary. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm serious, you know. Well, somebody I mean, explained the, to me non-binary. That's what it'll be, though. I mean, you know. I saw this. I, I tell you, I, uh, what was, oh, yeah, I was uh, 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 trying to get a new uh, pass for the subway for seniors, <laughs> okay? And uh, you had to fill out the form, and it had my name, blah, blah, blah. and then it said sex. It said male, female, non-binary. And I don't know. I'm, yeah, I, don't I know. may be not. I, I may be I, not. I may be non-binary and not say even at know. Your it. age, Alex, wouldn't it be non-binary? Because how much sex do you have anymore? Yeah, right. But what does non-binary mean? <laughs> You don't yeah, identify don't as a man or a woman. You identify oh, as a you, they. Who's gonna do it, you know, as a they. <laughs> Okay, from here on in, you can treat me as a they, okay? Uh, you know, I mean, that'll be that'll that'll be there soon, you know, I'm sure. Um, but all the justices now are, they're all in the same mold. I mean, you know, like I said, we're spreading it a little better amongst male or female. Yeah. And they're just trying to get it all with different races and things like that. But, I mean, they all pretty much took the same path. Mm -hmm. they basically, all go to four or five different colleges you know and things like that but i, I don't know that there's anything wrong with that right. it's it just i mean that's the finest training 
Yeah. In the interpretation of law and the land. So, well, I mean, uh, you know, why uh, not pick one? Well, uh, let's see. I, uh, let me ask Tony. Tony, are you non-binary? No, I'll just go as male. But, you know, I was going to ask you something. You know, I went walking with my sister. But She's a school if, if, if you saw male, female, check off one and bi, bi, non-binary. I would check both male. I would check non-binary just for the hell of it. I mean, but you want to laugh, Alex? Listen to this. My sister teaches elementary school. And, you know, when the kids come in, she teaches the higher learning kids. So they're really smart, these kids. So when they come into the room, she says, you know, my sister just says, you know, good morning, you know, boys and girls. So the, the I guess her superior called them all together for a meeting, like all the You teachers. can't say that anymore. Yeah, you can't. Just, we recommend you don't say that. Say, good morning, friends. My sister's like, oh, gosh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on a second. What, what grade, You're what the grade go- does she teach? She teaches second grade. Listen, I thought she was joking to me, Jason. She said, no, we were walking. I'm telling you the truth. It's like she my didn't get fa- reprimanded. Okay, but she said, okay. But it's like yeah, my yeah. father used to say to me, he said, I'm your father. I'm not your friend. Right. He <laughs> said, I hate parents who tell their kids, hey, I'm your friend. No, I can't be your friend because I'm your father and I have to make sure you do everything right. And that takes away my authority by saying, you're my, yeah, I'm your friend, right? Yeah. So your teacher having to say that in class diminishes her, um, uh, you know. She's taken back by it. Like, what? Be, Good morning, students. Yeah, but it, 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 anybody class. anybody disagree with me? It, it minimizes her authority. Yeah, it kind of does cheapen it. Like, really. Yeah, it cheapens her authority. Yeah. Alex, so she has one kid. I got to send, I, when I go over to visit Shecky out, she sends me like how sometimes she can record like their work. This kid is in second grade. He can do almost fractions. Already. You always talk about going over to see Shecky, and I know for a fact you've only <laughs> been over there a couple of times in the last year. I got there a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but all the time you say, well, I'm going out to Shecky. I know, I have next. to go back. Ever since COVID yeah, hit, I'm, I'm going I'm next. But Alex, yeah. so who's visited him more? Oh, I still got him beat, I think. I probably beat, visited him more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You'd have to ask him. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's been the trouble we've had has been COVID. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have a, a problem getting out there to them because, you know, every time I'm about ready to take a subway, they say, well, there's a flare up. You know, yeah. And then I don't Did you go. ever fix his door handle from your last visit? Oh, shut up. <laughs> no. You brought it up on the show. I didn't break it. It no, just it was it ready to be show. broken. You know, you got uh, ready to be broken. It was, it, it, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, I went to high school. If I was out there, I'd fix it for you. I don't know. If he's Can you? He tried gluing it with no, the super glue. No, go out buy another one for about twenty bucks and fix it. Really? Because they want to charge him five hundred to replace it. Yeah, I'm sure they do. A handle on a door? It's, it's easy. Five hundred dollars. It's the indoor Interior, handle. exterior. Interior. <laughs> Yeah. Holy Jesus, 25 yeah. bucks, man. Two screws, take off the panel, replace the part, put the panel back on, put the armrest back Listen, on. I'll fly you out from California, and then we'll go out to Shecky's. That and cost you can 500 bucks. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, I, I that's yeah, it's that easy, huh? I'll tell them that. Yeah. It's not that I'm, hard. I mean, I don't what know how to do it? it. What? What kind of car is it? It's a, uh, the, the, what is it? Do you know what his car is? I forgot, I forgot what, what he said. I think maybe it's a Honda. Is that? Is oh, that, yeah, it is a Honda. Yeah, it's, it's very a Honda. easy. It's just a little plastic latch. Yeah. And it's held in there with a couple of screws, and there's a little arm that goes on it, and it clips on with an arm. And I have, I have to look at it carefully when I go out there next time. You know time. what you do? You go to YouTube, <laughs> look up the model of the car, how to replace the, the latch on it, and it'll tell you just how to do it. Hmm. You could probably do it just by going to YouTube. Yeah, but I, you know, if I go out there and I do it for him, because he won't do it. He just won't do it. That's not that's not in his uh, wheel. Tony house. will go over there and do it. But oh, I'm he, not he, he, he won't he won't do it. I could probably look it up on YouTube. I could probably handy. see how to do it. Handy, you know? Okay, yeah. and then I can go out there and do it for him. But the fact is that if I screw up, then I'm never going to hear the end of it. Yeah. You'd be getting a call like Robin through the window. Man, would you do the window that? Yeah, yeah. I think it's Shecky's Jewish. Huh? I think it's Shecky is Jewish. Yes. That's why you never hear the end of it? Well, he, I mean, he, you know, he, he brings it up every now and then. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. 
you know. Um, Sorry, I brought wait, it I got a couple more items here that I, I always put them in the printer and then I never remove them from the printer till I'm doing the show. Um, did you hear about, uh, uh, did I mention this last night about uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Marjorie Taylor Greene? And the fact I don't know, that but I saw it. the other night he was on and he was talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene and he said, uh, where's Will Smith when you need him? <laughs> okay. She immediately turned. Uh, oh, that's violence Kimmel, against women. Turned Kimmel into the Capitol Police. Yeah. The very people she voted against for them to get money for what? For injuries and so on from uh, uh, the 6th of uh, January of last year. Then Matt Gates got involved and everybody. And Matt Gates got involved and everybody. And what oh, what did he what did he say to Matt Gates? He wrote Matt Gates a tweet. And yeah, it's, it was something like Matt Gates said that she would have his way with him, and then he said, "Oh, what the hell did he say? It was funny." As no, shit. what what he said was, "Oh yeah, why, uh, why don't you stay at home and order out for Girl Scout cookies?" Yeah, he said, stay away from the Girl Scouts are out selling cookies right now. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so so Marjorie Taylor Greene was turned him in, into the into the Capitol Police, who promptly never even called Kimmel, you know. I mean, she's got it. She's a piece of work. She really is. She's amazing. Uh, did you see where Great... They showed a picture of her with her machine gun and her... And her, uh, her uh, a billboard in the back, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene for Senate or something. Yeah, yeah. Her machine gun in her hand. Anyway, um, um, Greg Abbott, who is the wonderful governor of the state of uh, Texas, uh, excuse me, of Florida, rather. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Governor I'm Greg no. Abbott. Oh, wait a minute. Texas. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, Texas the governor, right. I'm reading, I'll, uh, let me start this over again. Hey, I have some items here. <laughs> would you like to hear them? Uh, yes, let me. Let me I think you know this would help. All right. Um, Ron DeSantis, who's the governor of Florida, appeared locked in competition. Who can best channel the latest free-floating right-wing grievance into state policy? This is from Vanity Fair. Uh, Greg Abbott or Ron DeSantis. The rules of the game are very simple. Every time one of these governors releases a salvo into the nation's culture wars, the other has to match it or exceed it. All right. Uh, voting rights, the pandemic, reproductive rights. Now, on Wednesday, Abbott announced, you ready for this, he plans to bus undocumented immigrants to the steps of the United States Capitol as a kind of protest against the Biden border disaster mm -hmm. to help local officials whose communities are being overwhelmed by hordes of illegal immigrants. There's just one slight caveat in all of this. The, uh, what do you call it, the people, the uh, 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 undocumented immigrants have to agree to take the trip to Washington, D.C. And I don't think he's going to get any of them to do that. Uh, and uh, then, of course, we've got the whole problem with... Uh, I got a comment, but it's probably going to be really bad. What? I said I would make a comment, but it would probably sound really bad. Oh, go so ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, no. Go ahead. It's being recorded. I'm not going to say You it. can't. You can't. Hey, you're not employed, man. You don't have to be careful. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on. No, I, oh, all I'm saying is uh, don't tease us like that. Yeah. Don't say, well, I have something to say, but I'm not going to say it because, I will not, you know, yeah. and then I'm going, boy, that must really be good. I retract it. Oh, you retract it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see here. So, by the way, did you know Beto O'Rourke is running against Abbott in Texas? And yeah. it's, it's And there's a chance he can win. It's neck and neck. Yeah. It's neck and I don't neck. think so. Wouldn't that be great? Well, who wants that? Guy in the in the state house to begin with, you oh, got to build all these guys. You got to spend a fortune on ramps for him being governor. Okay, and I I just think that that's a, a slight. I why don't we do a thing in Texas and just make it illegal to have handicapped ramps? <laughs> I'd probably pass down there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you you, you can't make me do shit. Yeah, yeah. What? But Beto, he's a he's a dweeb too. 
Well, he's a, but he's he's our dweeb. You know? Yeah, well, you, you know, some dweebs need to grow up and understand how old they are, and there's consequences with things you say. Yeah, I guess. But, uh, you know. Better than Greg Abbott. Better than, oh, a a Abbott is terrible. He is just horrible. I, uh, I'm surprised that Abbott, DeSantis, and, and Trump don't all run for something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see it also in, uh, where was it? Was it Oklahoma where the governor was... Uh, they were planning on oh in Michigan where they were planning on kidnapping the governor yeah nobody uh, got prosecuted nobody got prosecuted I saw that well and, uh, did they put it to trial did it go to trial yeah the jury came back and yeah. uh, two of them it was a hung jury and two of them were found innocent okay so the hung jury guys can be retried yes and then yeah. there is also another two who pled guilty yes aren't that they earlier uh, and now they're you know state witnesses yeah, but aren't they about to say, hey, we shouldn't have done that because we probably would have gotten off. Right. <laughs> Why the fuck did I even... Yeah. yeah. Hey, but, but, you know, it, it's just that's what kills me is, so these guys had a plan to kidnap the governor mm -hmm. already. Yeah. And then the FBI got involved, but yet the FBI was the one who led them to come to their plan to kidnap the governor. Say that okay. again. The FBI got involved because yeah. there was a group of people who were planning to kidnap the governor. Yeah. So. But yet, apparently, it was the FBI's idea for them to kidnap the governor, so they got off. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got off because I think they proved to the, ju the jury that it was just whimsical talk in, in talking about it. They were just yeah. talking about it. Because yeah. stoners are known to be violent and stoners are known to be plotting to kill and kidnap people because stoners have that much motivation to go out and do shit but you sit around in your house you know getting you stoned. can talk a lot you're of sitting stuff, there on the couch and then you go hey why don't we go kidnap the the governor yeah but yeah. you don't actually build explosives and go out to shooting ranges and go surveil people's you know survey people's houses and do yeah. all the other stuff because yeah. stoners are lazy and they don't do shit yeah yeah well you know Maybe, maybe, maybe those guys should be sent, uh, uh, should be thrown out of their, uh, out of out of Michigan, and made forced to live in uh, Texas. I think they where they, there's Ohio. another governor they can go after down there. Oh, did I just suggest something? Mm. Yeah. Uh, hello, Br uh, Brian. How you doing? Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. Packing, uh, ready to go on vacation for a week. Oh, really? Yeah. You're not going to be here mm. next week? Uh, I'm gonna try. Oh, you're gonna. My Monday, you're... we'll we'll be on the cruise ship, so I'll try to call him from there. Really, Shecky has tried to do that, and it's pretty hard. They have lousy Wi-Fi on cruise ships. Yeah, they try to charge you extra for everything. So yeah, but you're you're loaded, so you can afford it. Yeah. With the going? job field that you're in, you're going on a cruise ship. Yes. Why, why wouldn't you just like take that petri dish at your work and just set up camp right in it? <laughs> Do a couple lines of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. are you going, Brian? Going to Mexican Riviera. Oh. The Mexican. It sounds so exotic, but it's just it, it, no, no. Thing. It's the Riviera, but it's the Mexican. The Riviera, Riviera. from Mexico. Well, yeah. the good thing is, is over eighty percent of the Mexicans are vaccinated. You'll be fine. That's so Mexican. <laughs> Mexican Riviera. Well, wait, is wait a minute. Place so, to go. so, so, oh, yeah. are you taking the entire family? Yes, we had this cruise planned before COVID, and then COVID hit. So we sort of I hung on to the credits, and now um, they are like you know, everything's 35% off of everything. So we upgraded the room, we got all these extras, and now we still have like $2,000 worth of credit. So yeah, yeah, so we're doing good. You so, can uh, get one of the free buses back to DC and get a free trip. Wait, what, what, is, what is she got? <laughs> what is she doing? What's she playing with? What is that, Adrian? It's, Adrian. Slime. What? Slime. It's called slime. So oh, it's slime. like the kid's new Play-Doh. Oh yeah, well slime's been around for a while. Yeah. Are you having fun with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, until she drops it and I And it gets stuck in the I rug and yeah, yeah. You have to you have to I pull a Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, now Will Smith is another big story today. Uh, oh, the uh, the Academy has said that he's barred from going to any Oscar ceremonies for ten years. 
But he can still get nominated and win. Yes. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, yes. oh yeah. yeah. He's not yeah. barred from being a nominee. You know, it's just when they go <laughs> and, and the winner is Will win? Smith, that somebody else is going to have to go up and get the award for him. Jada. Mm -hmm. Jada. Chris Rock will get it. Well, Jada's still allowed to go, I guess. Well, why 10 years? I mean, so 10 years, you know, he can well, come back. He then. quit the Academy. He quit the Academy. So now that he quit, could he actually be nominated and win? Does yes. He quit? Yes, he can. But he, it, it, not being a member of the Academy, I think he can't buy tickets to the Oscars. I, 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 unless he wants to be way up in the balcony somewhere. You know? No, he's like barred from going to being at any of their events for 10 years. Events? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's events, yeah. Oh, yeah, gee, man. then he can't go to the Vanity Fair party? Oh, my God. Or are those private parties? Uh, you know. Anything that's to deal with that, he can't go to. I think they just, uh, you know, they had to do something because they, they were embarrassed because they didn't do anything at the time. Yeah. You know. uh, how, many think, how many think that that's right, that he shouldn't be able to go for 10 years? Yeah. I, I go, you know, it's, it's kind of like um, um, Biden going after Putin and saying, we're going to take away your driver's license or your credit cards mm -hmm. or something, you know. Yeah. It it yep. it doesn't really mean much. So, he uh, does. Will Smith go? Oh, I can hardly wait for the Oscars every year. You know. Well, if he's nominated, then he would be. Hmm. If he's nominated, he might be. But I don't so there, know. There, there's a clip. I'm sorry. What? No, no. It's okay. There, there's a clip of Chris Rock when he hosted, and he was talking about how. He's, <laughs> he wants me to tell you that she made the slime. Okay? Okay, now get out. Okay. okay. So Congratulations. Sparkles. There's, there's a clip of Chris Rock when he was doing that, and he was ripping on uh, Jada Ann and um, Will Smith for not making it, and he made some kind of joke after it. Well, what know? it was was that, that was the right. year that Jada Pinkett Smith said she wasn't going to go to the Oscars because it wasn't inclusive enough. Ah. And so she didn't go, and neither did Will, because right. as we all know and we've seen, he's pussy whipped. Okay, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, he um, uh, did that, and uh, uh, they didn't go. So he made a joke about that, mm -hmm. about her right. not being there. And I can't so remember. I, I can't remember what the joke was right now, but yeah, it was, it was stupid. Uh, it, well, the thing was that she got a hold of uh, of him. And he was hosting the Oscars that year and told him that he shouldn't host the Oscars. And he said, but you're complaining that it isn't inclusive enough. And what's more inclusive than hosting the Oscars? If you want inclusion, mm -hmm. then you've got you to gotta want me to go out there and do the best job I possibly can. But no, she wanted him to not, you know, boycott the Oscars. Yeah, he said, he made a comment. Chris Rock says something like, it's like me boycotting uh, uh, one of those girls, uh, Panny, because I've never been invited. So, you know, <laughs> he was just ripping on like that. So. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so they, you know, um, uh, but uh, where were we? Oh, I don't know. I got these things. And they, I looked at the other one and I went, why did I print that out? Why did I want, think that, that was important? Well, Jason, where's your favorite place to go? Over there. Hey, really, I love the Moon mm -hmm. Palace. Mm. The moon it's palace. so expensive now, though. Like I just freaking looked at their website to go for a week. It was eleven thousand dollars. What's the moon Ooh. palace? Wow, it's a hotel resort. It's the largest all-inclusive resort in the Americas. Oh, wow. really? But what, what do you mean? Playa de uh, or, uh, I'm sorry. Was it? Um, yeah, uh, is it Playa de Carmen? Oh. Playa, Playa de Carmen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Cozumel, I, I I love them all, man, I, and it's so awesome. I think to go around there too and go see some of the, pyramids. you know, when I was growing up, I only thought of pyramids being in Egypt. Didn't realize that there was pyramids in the Americas too. And, you know, it's yeah, it's awesome. Actually, well, you know, yeah. to climb them and yeah. So Chichen Itza, we went. That's probably where you're talking about Chichen Itza. I, I've right. never been to Chichen Itza. It's too oh, touristy, really? but you, so, you can't climb it. 
Yes, I exactly. Ate, when I, we were when I I, I, school, I ate pizza in Chichen Itza. <laughs> when when I was when you know after high school, a bunch of us went a few times, and um, yeah, you were able to climb them there. And now, yeah, now they have it. They used to have that big chain, and you used to be able to climb and then yeah, back yeah. down. And you can see right over all the the forest there. Yeah, I find out. Yeah, like you're saying, the last I don't know how many years they, they don't let you climb. It's all roped off now. But, it, it's but, awesome to climb it, but scary as fuck to go down them. <laughs> yeah, because the brick and I have big pieces. The bricks yeah. are like this, and you're yeah. holding on to the chain, and people are trying to go up. But yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, you ever been in a cenote? No, uh, dude, the cenotes are awesome. Mm-hmm. You know the the underground caves or whatever with oh, like, basically really? underground lake. You know. Uh, they're pretty sweet. Yeah, we went down to what was it? what's what's the country down there where they also Belize? have Belize. Belize. You yeah. went to Belize, right? Yeah, we went to Belize, and uh, the the uh, we went to some of the you know some of the uh, pyramids or whatever they call them, uh, but they, they they aren't that terrific in Belize. They're you know they're okay, but they're not nothing. nothing I think they, that, huh? they got some good ones there, but then uh, Guatemala or whatever, and then Mexico, but you know they're. The Mayan uh, pyramids, they're, they're some that are pretty freaking sweet, man. They're pretty big, yeah. and you see it and just realize, you know, this thing's like almost 2,000 years old, and it's this yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's uh, one one of the interesting that you can actually go in, and you can see how there was another pyramid underneath. And then what they would do is when they would when they would come and overtake you to show their power, they would build a build pyramid over yours, yeah, on top. And there's one that's, uh, it's, I think it's El Castillo, which I think is funny too, because my, the Mexican side of my family mm-hmm. is Castillo, and it was it was a dome. It was their, uh, uh, what the hell, you know, to to basically attract the stars and everything. You know, it was their their telescope back in the day. It was, it was really awesome because it almost you compare that El Castillo to modern day telescopes. Mm-hmm. So that the building looks a lot similar. Wow. Well, I, I I don't know. We we have to go on a vacation, and I don't know where. And you need to. We need to. Yeah, although we we're, we're less flush with money now than we used to be, um, because the, this legal action has gutted us. You know, mm. but I mean, we still have money, and so we're we're, we're probably we've got to take a nice vacation. I want to go to Europe. I like Europe, but right now it's it's number one. It's very expensive. I mean, it's incredibly expensive. And secondly, there's still a lot of places they won't let you in. You know? Go to Russia. I hear the ruble is really easy. <laughs> yeah, they're really happy. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe maybe I could go to the Ukraine. You know, yeah, <laughs> they'll pay you to come. <laughs> it's what they call a fixer upper vacation. You know? I mean, it's, you know, it's so terrible. I'm, t- I'm sorry to, to, to put you in a position where I'm downing you, but geez almighty, uh, what's going on in Ukraine is just insane. They fucking hit a train station today. That just pissed me off. Yeah, Adam. they hit a train station. Oh, that's a well, military that's a target. target. Yeah. Well, they're fucking find them, motherfuckers. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm for the no-fly zone now. Yeah. yeah, I think Ukraine ought to start firing missiles into Russia. I was so happy when they hit a fucking mm-hmm. uh, gas depot. Yeah, I was. You know, the, the Russians were like, "Oh, you can't hit us. We can only bomb you." Yeah, yeah, you, you can't, can't bomb you, us back. Yeah, you can't that hit Russia. That particular missile was a was a guided missile that was could be hit within three hundred feet from seventy five miles away, and they hit a fucking train station. <laughs> we're trying to get out of obviously not with an a, accident with a scatter bomb there, I mean but it, the whole thing is I just don't understand isn't there a thing called the Geneva Conventions and isn't that a reason I think we went into several countries over the years claiming that we were doing it for humanitarian reasons isn't that why we well, went into time I think what isn't that the reason we went into Iraq was humanitarian reasons we use that as the excuse and they're, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just getting ridiculous over there. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's time that we went in there, and I'm getting very mad at this president for not doing anything about it. Oh yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're going to. We're, send we're scared you- of Russia, but yet Russia can't take out a country the size of Texas within ten minutes. 
We could do that within 10 minutes. Well, you know, I've suggested on this program that, uh, that Biden, when he was in Poland and 10 miles away from the Ukrainian border, should have slipped across the border and gone to see Walensky. Uh, wait a minute, I, I, wait a minute. Everybody goes, oh, that's, that's, that isn't a good idea because there's a problem with that, blah, 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 blah. The fact of the matter is, you know who's thinking of going there and doing exactly that? The Pope. The Pope. Yep. So if it's well, good enough I for the Pope, the Pope isn't it good enough for one of his worshipers? Yeah, Catholic. but I bet the Pope's not a target like a U.S. president. What do you the mean? The Catholic religion is pretty strong in uh, Russia, isn't it? Absolutely. Do you think anybody would try and kill Biden? Do you think so? Uh, that... Not, not you know, he's got an insurance policy. It's called Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Does anybody does anybody want him to die in office? No. Can you imagine Kamala Harris being president? Yes, I can. I think she'd do okay. Yeah. You know. Better than Trump. Hmm? Well, what, well, anything's better than Trump. Well, uh, what do that's you, the reason why we voted for Biden, right? Yeah. It's the only guy who could beat him. I mean, Josh, if something happened to Biden, which it could any day, you know, don't know. You know, at his age, it's mm -hmm. all a crapshoot. Uh, my age, it's not only a crapshoot, it is a crapshoot. Um, uh, the question is, and she became president, how do you think she'd do, Josh? I think she'd be adequate. I mean, yeah. I'm, not yeah. a, I'm not a big fan, but I mean, in our system of government, you know, the republic would go on and she would serve as a placeholder and, you know, mm -hmm. execute the... Uh, the duties, maybe in ways we didn't like, but they would think it would get done. I mean, but aren't there a lot of people in okay. her government yeah. and the same party that think that she would not be a good placeholder? I, I wonder how many no presidents problem. took on somebody scarier than if you know as vice president. At kind of like <laughs> if current happened policy. to me. This is what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. Right. Well, I don't think Kamala Harris is an insurance policy. I, I, I think people go, well, I, I voted for Biden and I want him to be president. But mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody's saying, well, you know, if something happens to him, God, God forbid Kamala Harris would be president of the United States. I don't see that as being terrible. I didn't say God forbid. I just I mean, don't, don't think she's prepared. No, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's a situation like that. Like I say, you know, I'm not a I'm not really a fan, but I'm I'm just saying if she had to assume the office because of some mm. tragedy. I mean, you know, the, the, the government is set up in a way that you know, well, can happen in a, in a weak individual in that office can, can maybe not do a very good job or, or, you know, maybe we have some setbacks and things like that, but we've had that all the time anyway. It, you know, the Republic is, is going to go on is what I'm saying. What, it's, what, it's I'm, saying, be, what I'm saying and, okay. and, uh, is if you look back at history, uh, Truman, Correct. Was yeah. when he became president, everybody went, "Oh boy, this guy's a loser." Yeah, there, there was no one that thought he would be. A and he president. became a damn good president, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the same was true of uh, of Lyndon Johnson. They said, That's "You really so want awesome. Lyndon Johnson as a president?" But when he became president, he he passed yeah. more civil rights legislation than any yeah, president I mean, it, in know, history. Even even more so, you know, with. Gerald Ford, who was never elected to be vice president or president, right. but was able to execute the duties of the office well enough that, you know, the country came out okay. And, and it was kind of in a time of, I don't know if you want to call it crisis, but there was certainly turmoil, right? I mean, everything was not hunky-dory or he wouldn't have became president, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and then when he asked for his chance to be president, you know, he wasn't elected. So the people didn't particularly care for him, obviously, all that much. He didn't get elected. Right. Um, but you know what? Is, is but, but, but nothing, you but, know. What we did we get was a good, what we, we did get, over. what we did, did get was a great trivia question. Yeah. Uh, who was the only person ever to become president of the United States who was never elected to the office? To either office, right. You yeah. know, so, I mean, it's... I wouldn't be worried or anything, you know. I yeah. just, I don't particularly like her style, but that doesn't mean that she can't do the job. But that's the yeah. bad thing is I think well, there's enough. a lot of people in the White House who don't like her style either, including, mm -hmm. like, you know, members of everybody's staff. <laughs> what what don't they like about well, it? Well, that's the checks and balances that are in place to keep her under control if she does anything strange. 
Yeah. But I mean, uh, she's just not liked, I think, you know, but how many, how many of you would say maybe, no, like maybe the attitude about Kamala Harris isn't of her own doing, but is a perception created by a certain amount of sexism? Mm, no. I don't know, really. You know, I mean, I think it's fair enough to say that a lot of times if there is a female who is sort of a prick, you know, mm-hmm. that she will get a harder time about it or a reputation than, uh, than I think a man would. I mean, I'm sure that we've had presidents, okay, I mean, who were terrible to do. I mean, Lyndon Johnson, right? I mean, he yelled a lot and he, you know, called Winston Churchill, you know, and he'd make his secretary cry or whatever, but he was Winston Churchill. But I think if a woman did that right now to a man, you know, yeah, I mean, Kamala Harris, she made that poor 22 year old college intern guy cry, you know, I mean, what a bitch. Yeah. 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 No, it's, I I don't know who said it, who said it a long time ago. But if a, if a woman is, if a guy is a, a taskmaster, they say, boy, he's got balls. You know, he, he, he rules with a good, with an iron fist, you know, good for him. And if it's a woman, they say, what a bitch. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so I, that, I think that's a fair argument, you know, to, yeah. to think about. But I'd put that out there. Do you remember Tulsi Gabbard? Yeah. Yeah. From Hawaii, mm-hmm. like I, I was so rooting for her because she seemed like she was a very strong woman. Mm-hmm. I, I really, I could see her being in charge. She's, she was attractive, but she was also a very strong woman. You wanted but a president it, you could jerk off to, right? And, no, it, it wasn't that. You know, I, I'll be honest. You know, she would just seemed like she was a very, you know, strong personality, mm-hmm. and I liked a lot about her, but some of the stuff with uh ukraine coming on now i'm starting to believe the stuff that maybe she's a russian agent <laughs> really why do you think she was a russian agent just she was sitting there saying before why you know is the president even you know uh giving him any of this stage or platform you know all ukraine needs to do is just vow that they will never you know try to apply for nato and none of this will ever happen you know give russia you know their security and blah 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 you know, I got news for you. Any if there was ever a country that needed to join NATO, it's Ukraine. Oh no, now it's Finland. Why? They're already starting to talk about you know Finland trying to maybe apply for NATO, and Russia already starting to talk about maybe attacking Finland. Too. No. Mm-hmm. By the way, by the way, I heard something today that just really bothered me. There was a guy I used to have on this show, a comedian. Uh, uh, not any, anybody that's been on a long, long time. I won't say his name because of what I'm about to say. I was told this by Michael Snyder. He is part of a group of people who have the belief that we aren't being given the full story of what's going on in the Ukraine, and basically they're nothing but Nazis. You know, that whole thing? There about, is it, a little bit of an argument to that. In what respect? That the the what is that area that the uh, uh, Russians are holding on to on the eastern side? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know Belarus or something. Well, Belarus that, is a country, but anyway, there yeah. have been uh, Ukrainians going in there and fighting them. They're separatists. They want to join part of Russia, mm-hmm. and there have been Ukrainians. And I'm talking like no, white well, no, Nazis, well, no, 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 people but, with the tats on the necks and everything, going in there and fighting some of these people. So there, there is a little bit of a struggle. Well, there's a little bit of that here in the United there, States too. Exactly, exactly. There's nothing nowhere near warranting a war for another country to be going in there and invading these people. Yeah, but I mean, to, he, he, this particular guy was playing out the whole theory that, you know, that uh, Putin is trying to put forward. You know, these soldiers, when they go into a town there, they go, we're here to get you Nazis. But there are no Nazis like that. I mean, not, you have to throw a very large boulder in order to hit a Nazi, okay? I mean, this whole concept that they're Nazis is just ridiculous. And to hear an American, especially somebody I know and like, come out with that same theory, I'm going, what happened to this guy? You know, why did he suddenly go nuts? You know? Did, did you see the people who voted for Trump? Yeah, well, I mean, also, well, he wouldn't have voted for Trump, I'm sure, because he's very much of a lefty, okay? But he's so far to the left, he's come around the other side to the right wing and is giving out with these things about, 
about the fact that you know Ukraine is uh, is uh, has a real problem that way. They're Nazis, and all oh, all the footage that we see has been staged. Mm. Boy, that's a big production. Yeah, I, I don't the think dog. there's a Hollywood studio who could afford that one, you know. Yeah, one one of my one of my very talented car friends, who's got a little done a little wacky on that side, and he's he claims on their conspiracy theories that you know that that Zelensky was put in there by by America, mm-hmm. and, and he's an actor. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an actor, we know, and now yeah. he's playing an actor in as a president for us and that's why they're trying to take him out and you know it's ridiculous it's just absolutely it, it, ridiculous my whole thing is just russia be a better neighbor why are they choosing our side instead of your side look if you're a better neighbor you're right there what they're there. doing i think is absolutely egregious and it goes against the geneva conventions most of the stuff they're doing in there and that they should be taken to task, that the nations of the world should come together and go in there and throw the Russians out of there. And the Russians aren't going to be able to fight it because the Russians don't have the money or the or the, or the uh, armor. Or, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Armed power to, to take care of it, you know. So. I, I think that their war in Ukraine is just proof that we should not be afraid of Russia. Well, uh, not uh, at all. you were saying that, weren't you, Josh, to us the other night? that we're unreasonably afraid of Russia, but that they're really failures at war. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it's been that way really since the, you know, the reinstitution of their, you know, big time communist uh, Cold War attitude, you know, after the Second World War. I mean, you know, but look, they had failures in the Second World War, you know, I mean. Uh, I mean that they've always had this command structure of corruption. They have and, more nukes than us, but how many of them actually and, work? And, and no, we, we, we have more nukes than they do. Work. NATO no, has more have, nukes than they do. Well, NATO does, but Russia has more nukes than the U.S. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's but yeah. That, that's what I'm just saying though. Look, looking at their tanks and looking at some of their other infrastructure, how many of their nukes actually work? How many those tanks must be made out of cardboard? Do you notice how they just seem to fall apart by the side of the road? Yeah. I mean, we how many tanks does it look like we've they you know the Ukrainians have, have destroyed? I, I think one thing the U.S. is going to have a problem with is all the kids who are in military right now. I, I hear a lot of stories about you know like how the drill sergeant used to make you do push-ups and sit-ups and all that stuff, and mm-hmm. I heard that mm-hmm. they're not allowed to do that anymore. If they do that, they have to do that with them. And that a lot of this whole new, you know, all these new generation of kids, they're just so soft. Yeah. They're not- it's been since the 90s that the drill instructors have to do the same exercises that the recruits do. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so a lot, a lot of stuff I don't know if it's getting too soft for all that now too. Well, you know, I mean, I, I think it's just terrible over there and I think we should do something about it. And I'm, I'm never one to say, let's go to war anywhere. But man, if there was ever a reason, this is a reason. You know, mm-hmm. the, what's going on over there is just terrible. It's just terrible. You know, so, anyway, th- hey, there's our theme song. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. Jeff, as always, great to have you here. Uh, Jason, nice to have you here tonight. You know, a pleasant surprise. Uh, and of course, Josh. Uh, always good to see you you're always a nice presence on our show and of course there's Alan and there's Tony and then there is Kevin uh, and you're on vacation next week so we probably won't see you Brian Brian, uh, Brian excuse me <laughs> let's get this confused we, all look, we look very I'm much out alike. of it I'm gone you, you know, put your I'm, name thing up there you lost yeah, yeah you should put okay. your yeah. Anyway, Brian, thank you. And well, maybe we'll see you next week or maybe we won't, you know. I'll make a guest appearance. I'll try to. Okay. Everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. Uh-huh. There they go, folks. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and, and they'll be back again, I'm sure, next week. Except for Brian, who's going to be out there vacationing. That's very, very nice. 
Anyway, uh, I'm out of here now for a couple of days, and then on Monday we'll be here at 4 o'clock with uh, the pop-up show we do that's on uh, goes out over Facebook, okay? And then uh, we're back here again uh, on uh, Wednesday night, same time, same station in life, 10.30 Eastern. And in the meantime, as always, you know what I always say, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.